uh, following up in <laughs> Ryzen versus Intel, which one is smoother or is there something to the smoothness? Well, it turns out there is something to the smoothness, but it's not really a big deal. <laughs> oh, the frustrating non-answers. No, everybody's gonna like vent their spleen and lose their mind. So behind me, I've got a graph of our two systems, our Intel 7700K system in GTA 5, and then we've got our Ryzen 1800X system also in GTA 5. And we're gonna do a deep dive on the numbers. Now, in our part two video, purely subjective testing, it's like, can you definitively say one or more of these systems is definitely better than the other ones? And the answer was no, we could not. We did record some anomalies and some other gameplay issues and that sort of thing, but it's not, you know, the confidence interval is not there. Just because there's, there's something reported there doesn't mean that it's like a dramatic difference. There's shades of gray here, people. It's not, you know, black and white necessarily. But when we started diving into the data, we noticed something that was kind of interesting, at least in the specific case of GTA 5. Now GTA 5 is sort of an odd critter. When GTA 5 is dealing with ridiculous frame rates, there are known issues, and there are known issues with the benchmark. And so how do we separate GTA 5 from the rest of everything? And the answer is we can't necessarily, not perfectly. We're just gonna share our method and share some ideas that we had for actually doing stuff and run through it. But it's better to have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the things maybe with GTA 5 is when you start getting past 165 FPS, maybe it gets more weird and stuttery. There were reports of that you know, earlier this year. So we put a 1080 tie in the Ryzen system versus a 1080 in the 7700K system to try to give the 1800X Ryzen system that much more of an oomph to see if we could make it a little bit faster than the 7700K. But the 7700K with the 1080 was still faster for ridiculous frame rates for things at, at 1080p. Now some people are just gonna take that headline, turn the video off and run with it, but I think the whole story here is a little bit more interesting. Let's take a look at our setup. We configured these two systems um, with two 1080p outputs. And so my monitor here is divided into four quadrants. This half is the 7700K. The lower 1080p half is for the game. The upper 1080p half is for uh, output of PerfMon, which is a performance monitor utility that's built into Windows for debugging. Programmers use it, it's great. And then, you know, we've also got the task manager, which is a more simplified view. The identical setup on the other half of the screen for the 1800X. Uh, and even playing side by side, knowing which system was which, I had a hard time telling, we all did, uh, which, you know, which system subjectively or objectively is better between the two of them. We looked at message signal interrupts. We looked at NVIDIA versus the Fury. We actually did some testing with the Fury. I'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Um, we looked at deferred procedure calls, interrupts per second, uh, cache faults, page faults, pretty much anything that Perfmon would let us monitor, uh, looking for disk IO or, or anything that we could really quantify. Now the great thing about GTA 5 is that GTA 5, when it stutters, it's pretty easy to pick up and it's pretty easy to see visually, and it's pretty repeatable. Repeatability is really a key. When we were doing our Fallout 4 testing, it was super not repeatable. Like if you just sat down on the same system and we went through the same motions on the same system, it was really not super repeatable, especially when you looked at a graph, like a graph, a graph of frame times or, or, or whatever. Um, but with GTA 5, it's got a canned benchmark but you can also play in some of the same scenarios. So we did real world playing at the beginning where you're trying to steal the car or pick up the car or repossess the car or whatever, which is the beginning of the story mode. Um, and we also did the canned benchmark. Now behind me are the graphs for the, the canned benchmarks, which I'm gonna start with, but it's the last thing that we tested. On the Ryzen system, we were seeing maximum frame rates of around 150, 160 FPS, maybe a little bit more, but you get the idea. While on a 7700K system, we were seeing, you know, 170, 180, 190, no problem. And that's consistent with what we've got from the output of FRAPS. So for the output of FRAPS, for the CAN to benchmark in GTA 5, these two systems configured identically, as identically as they can be, is 190 FPS average on the 7700K, 133 FPS for the 1% time, and 97 FPS for the 0.1% time. Now on the 1800X, 
we've got 171 FPS, average 101 FPS in the 1% time, and 85% on the 0.1% time. If you look at those numbers and these graphs, mostly it looks like it's a, it's a strong win for Intel, and it pretty much is for those numbers. But if you look at the outliers on this graph, there are several frames that are way above 16 milliseconds. 16 milliseconds is 1 60th of a second, so 60 frames per second. You get the idea. These frames, the whole game stalls while those frames are being rendered. On the Ryzen system, we have some outliers that are more than 16 milliseconds, but they're not way outside 16 milliseconds. Some of these frames on the 7700K are like 100 milliseconds plus. There was one that was like 180 milliseconds. And when we were playing, not the CAN benchmark, which is known to have issues, Ryzen was more consistent, but lower overall in everything. Lower minimums, lower average, the whole nine yards. So this camera, which can do 180 FPS, we captured by just pointing it at the display so we can figure it out. Now this display can only capture 85 FPS and only when it's in full screen mode. So <laughs> bear in mind that what you're gonna see on the screen is more for your benefit than the actual test setup that we did because we don't have a capture device that can capture the raw signal at 180 FPS. So you gotta live with that, but just, just trust me, it's interesting. So you can see very clearly in the game the stutters that correspond to the stutters that we see in the graph. I mean, check it out. It seems like the entire game stalls while waiting on this one frame, even though the graph would have us believe that the very next frame was ready before the frame that was missed. And so what should happen here probably is that frame that's taking a long time, just drop it, move on to the next one because it's already been more than 16 milliseconds. Now maybe that the render pipeline or whatever can't actually do that, but when you have a frame that takes this long to render, the whole game hitches. And the whole game hitches for more than 100 milliseconds, which is definitely human noticeable. Um, and you can clearly see that in the high-speed video. Now, the 1800X system has similar problems. Again, this is probably just down to GTA 5. We're probably not looking at differences between systems here. We're probably just looking at bugs and unoptimization in GTA 5 itself. But even though Ryzen has some other problems, some other stutters like that, it doesn't stutter quite as badly as the 7700K. And when you're not doing the artificial benchmark, Ryzen's graph looks even better. But again, it still will stutter and hang occasionally as you're playing. But it happens so infrequently, even on the 7700K system, you know, there's three times in the real playthrough, not the benchmark numbers, there's three times in the, in the real numbers, uh, in the real playthrough, where the game hitched. And you can see that very, very clearly in the video. But if you look at our 0.1% times, there's no hint of that in the 0.1% times because it was three times out of 20,000 frames. Not really much there. If you look at it on the Ryzen system, the Ryzen system, the numbers on paper are worse than the 7700K. But as you're experiencing the game, as you play through the game, you don't notice the hitches as bad because you don't have any that last 100 milliseconds plus. It's sort of interesting. Now, subjectively, again, we couldn't tell a difference between the two systems doing a double blind test because just you detect that there is a hitch or that there is something going on there. Uh, and it is also interesting that even with the 1080 tie, the Ryzen system is still capped at around 150, 160 FPS. We thought maybe that was an NVIDIA driver, an optimization problem. We tried the Asus Strix Fury at 1080p, and we ran through the games at 1080p with the Strix Fury, and we really had the same basic kind of results that we had, you know, 150, 160, 170 FPS uh, was basically it. We thought maybe that was message signal interrupts, had a great helper on the forum helping us with message signal interrupts on the NVIDIA side. Um, enabling message signal interrupts did give us a little bit of a performance boost, very small, but noticeable. Um, and that's what helped us have the fire strike record for a very brief while um, on Ryzen systems. So that was pretty cool. These differences are really academic. We've done a really deep dive. We, we've basically done everything short of actually disassembling the GTA 5 executable and stepping through what it's actually doing to know what happens. Well, there is one stone that's unturned. We turned it and the results there were kind of interesting as well. So uh, Matt Yellow, a Norwegian gamer, uh, tweeted me and said, 
hey, what about testing this with a CRT, measuring the latency? Well, he's got the right idea, but we don't need to haul out the CRT for this. I've taken this mouse and modified it so that as soon as you press the mechanical button, the primary button, an LED will come on. And the LED coming on is a hardware function of the mouse. I've covered the sensor with tape, so the only input this mouse can deliver is button one was clicked. And as soon as button one is clicked, the LED comes on. We can use our fancy 180 FPS camera again to capture what's happening at 180 FPS so that when I press the button, you can see the mouse and the LED on screen, we can measure the number of frames until the game responds. And so setting up again, side-by-side -side systems, same monitor input, same monitor, everything, we're measuring the end-to-end -end latency from the time you click the button to the time the display responds. By doing that, we can measure the total latency of the system. So when we press the button and the LED comes on, we just count the number of frames from the time the LED comes on to the time we see the first frame of the animation in the game. So for that, we tested GTA 5, Fallout 4, and Tomb Raider. Now in GTA 5, uh, there is an option for raw input or direct input, which will sample USB at a thousand times per second. The rationale here was, you know, Ryzen has an on CPU USB controller. Remember from the block diagrams that there are USB resources that are located on the CPU. So we tried all the USB inputs on our uh, ASRock X370 Tai Chi to see if we could maybe say, okay, maybe some of the smoothness is because the system overall is responding faster at least to within one 180th of a second. And we're able to definitively say, there's really no difference between the two systems, at least to one 180th of a second. We tried it. There wasn't really much of a difference between the Intel and the Ryzen system, but good thought. And so with all of that, you've gone down the rabbit hole of complexity and insanity, knowing that we used Perfmon to monitor deferred procedure calls, uh, interrupts per second, you know, cache misses, cache hits, pretty much anything that we could think of that might possibly cause a resource contention of some kind, because it feels like a resource contention, but we can't nail it down. We don't really know what exactly it might be off the, off the top of our heads. So yeah, that's pretty much it. No stone left unturned, and I feel like I'm still pretty good friends with data. Hopefully the walkthrough of our rationale and, and our method um, was useful and interesting to you. I'm Wendell, I'm hanging out on the level one text forums, and I'll see you there. The cat died. No. Wait. Oh, is he alive? He's moving. You horribly crippled it. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> Wondering what happened to his ribs. Dying. Can I give him a stim pack? Oh. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs>